There once was a boy who dreamt of an almighty sword. The boy woke up one night in a cold sweat knowing his life's dream was to craft the ultimate sword. But the boy needed to seek out a master blacksmith to hone his skills. He found a blacksmith who had thousands of years carved into their being, crafting any sword imaginable. The boy went through rigorous trials to prove he was worthy of the intense training. Eventually, the master blacksmith accepted the boy and trained him, and for years he pounded away. And just as he was losing hope that his dreams would never be a reality, he used everything the master taught him and finally made the sword of his dreams. And that brings me to the topic of today's video in how to create manga in Clip Studio, the super exclusive in-depth guide by Vandal. Alright, hey there everyone, it's your boy Vandal and today we're going into an in-depth video about the manga making program called Clip Studio. To properly explain everything that this program has to offer, let me start with a story from my past. From the dawn of time. Okay, maybe I'm being a little extra, but stay with me here. Since I could draw, I've enjoyed making manga and comics. I used to always make manga with paper, pencil, ink, and you know all those tools you use. As I got more into drawing stories, I got more materials, and the process came into line and started to make sense. However, there were some issues that came with creating manga physically, like access to a proper scanner to give that professional look, and some limitations in my artistic ability, as well as simply the finality of all my materials that I had around me. And just when I was at my wit's end with the process, I discovered digital art. Now don't get me wrong, digital art at the beginning was not everything due to how the tools worked. And however, at the time I was introduced to different programs like Manga Studio and Photoshop and other programs. However, the issue was that it didn't really get half of anything and what anything did inside of the program and how it worked or how to use it. It was really confusing. And with that confusion, I wasn't a fast adopter of any digital art in the beginning. But this all changed when the iPad Pro was announced. G minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. Five, four, three, two, one. This was the first step that changed everything. Having this device that worked basically how paper and pencil would, but digitally with limitless tools at your fingertips. Now, what was missing was a program to put this all into one package. And that program was Clip Studio. Now, if you can remember earlier, I talked about a program called Manga Studio. It eventually got turned into Clip Studio and streamlined and refitted all that good stuff. Now, I wasn't too clear about the Manga Studio before, but I did learn a bit more about digital software, which helped me better understand how to use it and it carried over into other programs as well. But then what happened and really prompted me to really learn digital art and specifically how to make it with this program was a contest and this is a lot of how we actually met each other on this channel and that is the Tezuka contest which is I had to learn how to properly use the program to do this contest it was a chance for me to be read by some of the authors that I loved as a kid and that was all the motivation I needed to learn this program and you can check out this story right here so for the first part, what I had to do was learn how to make the manga in the app. But before I could even do that with Clip Studio, I learned that there were two versions of Clip Studio because I had to actually get the program. There was the EX version and then there was also the standard version. Now the EX version is the only version that allows you to make comics and manga and I think maybe even animation. I'm not. 100% sure, which honestly is pretty whack since they both do the same things minus the one caveat of the manga, but I think it's really exclusive to manga. But anyways, I got the EX version because dude gotta make his manga to make these dreams come true. You know what I mean? 
However, besides the cost of the iPad and the Apple Pencil, the software also costs a bit of money as well. Now, the price is gonna turn you off, but I just want you to not click off this video yet because I'm gonna tell you why you should invest into this program. So first, what you're gonna do is you can get a free three month trial of the program, no strings attached, and then if you don't like it afterwards, you can, you know, delete it off your computer or your iPad. And then after that, you have the opportunity to license it. And that's where I actually got the program. And I know no one really wants to pay for it, but I think it's worth it if you're gonna make manga in the long term, if you want this to be like your full time thing. So there are three ways you could license it that I had to choose from. The easiest and cheapest option would be the $9 a month trial, kind of like your Netflix, where you can cancel any time where you need to. And there's also the $72 a year, I know it just jumped up, or the lifetime for $219. However, one of the things that Clip Studio does that's nice from time to time, and if you look out for it, you can get a good deal, is that they do 50% off on their $219 uh, bundle. But to my knowledge, that is only for the computer. So if you're doing it on the computer and you want it at that time, jump on those deals. They're really good. And like I just said quickly, if you want to use it on the tablet or phone, you're going to need to get that monthly or annual subscription because that's the only way it can work on your iPad. But if you're just getting on the computer, you know exactly what you need to do. But since I had the iPad already, I already was going to go with the annual choice because I really fell in love with the app off jump. That said, I had three months to make this manga a reality. So if you're gonna get it and hopefully this video is out before that next Tezuka announcement or any other type of contest, you can use it for that because I think it'll be more than enough time for you to actually make it because I was able to make it within that time frame using this program. But it is well worth the price. I got the program and when I started it up, I was very confused like some of you who might have done it for the first time as well. So when I opened up the app, it makes you sign in for an account, which is just cool. I'll get to that in another time since it's not super important right now. But once it loads up, you're gonna see a whole bunch of icons and a blank canvas. Don't worry about this part because during my time of learning digital programs, the one thing you wanna do first is you wanna create a new file. So I went up to file and then I clicked new and then I got hit with more icons. I have to say this app has a lot of icons and figuring out what they do really takes with playing, but that's why you're here to learn how to use them right so let's break it down there are five icons the first symbol of the flower is for illustrations this is where you can make all those awesome characters from your story to put in your manga or comic book later the icon to the right of it is for creating your own very webtoon and the next three are for your comic and manga specifically the one next to the webtoon is your general comic and manga settings that aren't too specific, but just for creating manga or comics. The icon next to it with the book is for making a fanzine. So this is kind of if you're trying to publish this physically or put this in some sort of digital magazine, it'll help set that up for you nicely. And the icon next to it is for the general settings that will be for your comic. So these are all of the things that will be like your default for whenever you set up it in the third icon that we talked about earlier. And then the last one all the way here on the right is for animation and for all of those who want to dabble in that. I do want to make a tutorial on this, but I do want to actually use it because I haven't had much experience with it yet and try and redo one of my old animations. But if you want to know more about that and my first ever animation, leave a comment down below so I can, you know, know that you guys are interested in that. But let's move on. Okay, the setup part took me a while, but eventually I ended up in the fanzine section of all those icons I talked about earlier. And what I did in this section, because I think it's the best section for making your manga because it allows you to properly and completely set up your manga for print once you're finished creating it. Even though there is one part I will talk to you about that you should pay attention to very closely in this tutorial. So what I did next is I named my file note 
out and I saved it in a folder in my iPad for organization. I went next to the presets because I wanted to try and match the process for making manga like when you do it traditionally to get the page sizes exact. However, there are various page sizes within the program that allow you to make it to any size that you want. But I made it to 11 and a half by 16 and a half to match the manga pages that I normally work with traditionally. That said, there are presets for sizes and I would go with those to keep it easy so you don't have to raggle your brain too much. But keep in mind, if you want to print this, having all the information before you set up your document now will make your life easier later. That means knowing exactly the size that you need your pages to be or how you're going to print it out will definitely help you now versus later because there's another part to that that you can do but it's a lot more complicated and for the contest the contest wanted the dpi to be at least 300 and i bumped it up to 600 because it didn't hurt and dpi for those of you who don't know what it means it is dots per inch and it's very important for when you're printing out your project so putting it at a high number here didn't really hurt but no more than 600 was necessary for this to work i left the paper white but you could be fancy and mess with the color and do something i did say might be called artistic but now there are more settings the most important one here I didn't pay attention to in the beginning of making my manga was bleed after we finish up the setup I'm gonna go into why not paying attention to bleed is an issue since I made my storyboard initially I knew how many pages I needed which was very helpful if you don't have a storyboard yet please check out my video on making storyboards. It's very informative and will definitely help you with your whole process. Now, one key factor I should point out is that the binding point of your manga or comic is gonna be defaulted from right to left, which is mainly used for manga, but if you don't wanna use that, be sure to make sure that you click it that it's going left to right. Really, it's all dependent on the reading orientation from the country or the reader. In my case for this competition, it was for Japan, so I made my manga right to left. Now to wrap this up, I had to make the cover and choose the symbol that would make this into a whole book. The spine width, however, is something that you're going to know based on the place that will print your manga. This size is based on the number of pages, and I used 52 pages and added a little bit more so my spine would be thick enough to fit my logo of my series on it and my name. It just made it really feel legit and professional. I loved it overall. But lastly, you're going to put in your information into the story information information section to keep everything organized. You don't really have to do any of this part, but it really made everything feel official and it helped me keep track of the things that I wanted to look later to make sure that page numbers were correct and you know just seeing my name on things really gets that mangaka feeling going. It's a really good feeling and I think everyone should do it just for best practices. So once I had done all of that I hit OK and the document was set up. But when I was done the pages loaded up and there were a few things to note. Get it? Nope. Get it? Ah! I can't stop that joke. Okay, so the page is loaded up and one of the first things you're going to notice is you're going to know what page is page one, page two, etc. However, with this format, the cover page and the inner cover page inside of Clip Studio are your first two pages. So my page one was really my page three and then my page three later became my page five. But that's another story for another time. Now, I wanted to start drawing, but there's something I wanted to make a correction from my last video because this is important. So let me start with a fresh manga page to explain how these guidelines on this page will help us with the next part of our process. So this correction comes from an error that was noted in my last video. And the pages that I showed in the storyboarding video had an issue. And that was not paying attention to the guidelines of my manga page. So in this section, I'm going to try to break that down to make it as simple as possible because it'll definitely help you in the end and you won't make the mistakes that I made. Start with the innermost guideline. And this is the safe area, the standard area. Basically, this is the place where you want to have all of your important artwork, 
word bubbles and dialogue because like if you see in the pages that I have I didn't follow this and when it came to printing I had a difficult time trying to reformat it now what happens if you go beyond this line well when it comes time to print your book that artwork or dialogue really specifically is going to get cut out so what you want to do is just keep anything that definitely needs to be seen in this area so it doesn't get cut off in print now for the crop line and the bleed line because they're basically really close cousins if you will so the crop line is the point where your artwork will get cropped out for print that's why you want to keep your dialogue in the safe art area to make sure that everything you want to be seen, words and pictures and all, are seen by your viewer. And I didn't do that. So I had a lot of trouble in print. So you definitely could draw your art to that line, but make sure that it's art that you're okay with being clipped at the crop line. Now the bleed line is here because during the printing process, there are sometimes errors during the cutting and that's where bleed comes in to save the day. So if you have art that goes to the crop line, make sure it extends a little bit out to the bleed line in case of any errors. Now how much bleed your page should have is really dependent on how your printing company wants it, which I'll go over in another video in depth, but normally it's about 0.125 inches or an eighth of an inch. But it, then again, it's really up to your printer company, so check in with them and make sure you have all of that settled. That's what I talked about earlier. Make sure you have your information down, people. I hope that explained what those guidelines on the manga page are. I'm not gonna lie, I looked up a lot of this and watched multiple videos multiple times and I even consulted people on Discord and even now it still sounds a little bit foreign. So if I miss anything or any of or all of this info is not correct, please correct me and add any tidbits of knowledge to the comment section down below so people can be informed. But if there's anything that is the most important thing you can learn on this channel, it is this about bleed. Please bookmark this part. Don't forget it, especially if all the information is correct. I would love it. Thank you. Hit the like button. All right, now let's get back to the story. So I had all of my pages set and I wanted to get drawing as quick as possible. So I whipped out my handy dandy storyboard. So before this part, I took pictures of all the pages and I inserted them into each page of each part of the document. So to insert any image or picture into your page, what you need to do is you got to go to file and then you go to import and then you can choose what you want to import and it'll make its own layer and you can mess around with it from there. From on iPad, it might be a little different from when it's on the computer, but it's generally the whole same process. You can even just drag and drop if you're on your computer. So what I wanted to do after putting all of the pictures from the storyboards inside of their pages is I wanted to draw the panels from the storyboards but drawing the panels freehanded didn't seem like a good idea at the time because I wanted to look professional and I don't know about you but I know for myself that I don't draw the straightest of lines and I needed something to help with that. So I found out about this powerful tool that Clip Studio has and that's the panel creator. So the panel creator icon and this is an awesome thing because it had a lot of uses and what I initially used it for was to create the rectangles for the frames for each panel. And I tried to line up each of the rectangles was on the storyboard so everything could match up nicely. However, I didn't take into account the guidelines that we talked about earlier. So I want you to make sure that for your manga, you remember that you should always pay attention to these guidelines because they will help you so much later in the process. Now, later in the manga, I learned about having just one huge panel and you can take that one huge panel and you can chop it up using this tool called the cut frame tool and it can help you line up everything with your storyboard without having to make one by one rectangles however one use of the cut frame tool that I think is really important in its subsection is this thing called the divide into frame folder this will divide up each panel into its own folder so anything that you do within that folder or that layer will be contained it will not go into the other folders or any other part of your drawing it'll stay self-contained which is really awesome you can vary this up as certain situations arise but I think it's the best thing overall going forward because it'll give you a lot of just flexibility inside of your frame and you won't have to worry about spilling out unless you need to 
So one question that you might ask yourself at this point is what happens if you have to do a panel break or some type of art that overlaps with your panel? What's going to happen? So the easiest way that I found to do this is make a layer outside of these folders and then fill that object with white to hide the panels so that the panel lines underneath the art don't show. However, I'm sure you guys can find better ways to do this. This is just what I went through through my first pass. So you can just figure this out on a page by page basis. Just one of those things I wanted to cover up on the back end. So after after making all of the panels the way I wanted to on a page by page basis because I didn't do this all the way through because sometimes my panels change from storyboard to the penciling phase but I went into the penciling phase of my manga and the thing that I used for penciling was simple and it was the pencil tool this is the section that really is the same for each tool to a degree there are subsettings for each type of utensil like the pen tool or the fill tool they all have general similar ideas even the brush tool you can play around with each and if you feel like that setting doesn't match what you want in terms of the feeling on the canvas you can go into the next part which is the settings of that chosen brush i tended to mess with the most was the stabilization tool which basically is a setting that corrects your line so like earlier i talked about i don't have the steadiest hand so my strokes aren't that straight and they can be a little bit shaky so this helps make them a little bit more straight for those longer strokes or just keeping your line work looking sharp making them nice and tight and not as jittery you know what i mean so if you don't have that steady hand it's very helpful for using for like buildings or even those hard parts in those certain details of your character this was the last part where i used the size or the pencil of the brush where you can mess with that as well make it bigger smaller it's really up to you you can mess with these settings but i liked it here as a chill spot leaving it around the middle lane it depended on what the situation was honestly for what i was using it for i just wanted to show you guys each of those options that you have inside of the utensils after penciling I went to inking and that was pretty much fun there are so many ink pens but generally I use the G pen just like I use in real life I used it inside of the program and it was pretty good uh, it had the same settings that you can mess around with the pencil that we talked about earlier the only difference is the type of ink pens that you can use and mess around with to your heart's content and the one difference between the pencil and the pen is that I wanted to make the lines really crisp so in this instance I tended to make the stabilization really high. I would recommend not making it too high as it can make your line art be a bit stiff. So you can be a little bit more free in digital art in this sense where you can mess around with the stabilization so it can feel a little bit more like when you're inking in real life. So don't make it too high but just high enough that you can get like those crisp lines that follow your artwork nicely. Now even though drawing characters was the fun thing that didn't really need straight lines, this part of my drawing process definitely needed it and so during my time of drawing and inking I needed to make straight lines for the for the backgrounds with rulers okay so if you don't know me I really hate drawing backgrounds however the app clip studio did help a lot with this process as well as using a lot of references to get things to look how I wanted now the ruler tool has a lot of sub settings generally I used the parallel ruler to make lines that I wanted to be straight as well as in the same direction and they were well parallel to each other the parallel ruler is located in the special ruler section of rulers I also use the concentric circle to help me anytime I need to make a perfect circle or some type of round object thing it had the perfect amount of roundness anytime I needed it and you can mess around with it before and after you use it I also made good use of the perspective ruler this ruler is good for those who want to have a bit more complex background using maybe one point perspective two point perspective it does take some knowledge of perspective to position it properly but it is very helpful the perspective ruler will have you make two lines and create a vanishing point on the canvas and the lines within it will guide you to that point you have the ability to create more lines with this perspective it's a difficult tool but I wanted to bring it to your attention so the more that you play with it the better you'll understand how you can use it a lot of this program comes down to really practicing with this and the more you get acquainted to it the easier it'll be to use most of these tools 
So my manga was penciled and inked and that was awesome but one of the things that came up is in my manga I had black characters and I needed everyone to know that they were black and you don't have too many options when your manga has to be black and white and I couldn't literally make them black so I went for the next best thing and that is tone. Now this section isn't about how to use the tone tool but where the tone tool is and how to apply it to make your life super easy. So the tone in the Clip Studio app is located with this icon and now the problem is that I wanted certain things to be toned but only specific things on the page, not just everything to be the same tone. So what I needed to do first was I needed to get the selection pen tool brush and make a small selection and it could be anywhere on the paper really that I wanted to be toned. Next I chose the tone that I wanted for that selection and this part is pretty cool because the selected area will be filled with the tone that I chose. So all you have to do is just drag and drop that tone into that place that you selected. From here you can use the pencil, pen, spray tool and anything you really want to make that tone appear anywhere on your page as you'd like however even though this is really cool what you need to do next and what I did also is erase that small created tone because we don't want it just there because what happens after is really awesome so that whole layer that you have now is filled with that tone but you need something to show it so that's why I said you could use the pencil tool the pen tool or the spray paint tool whatever you want to use but the best tool for this right now we're gonna use the paint bucket tool and here we need to modify this tool a little bit to make sure that it's aware of all other layers so what's gonna happen is no matter what layer you drew as long as you're filling it it's gonna be cognizant of every other layer and it's gonna fill that one space that you want and not just go everywhere on your page like it would if you had it on a different selection because what's gonna happen now is when you use the paint bucket tool you can just drop the tone that you want anywhere that you want in the same place so if it's skin it can go on the hands the face wherever you need if it's like a tree tone or if it's a street tone whatever you want it can go anywhere but it's very very simple and very very useful once you get it set up and it can make things so much easier for you and if you need those fine details that you can't just get with the paint bucket tool you can just use the pen tool to mess with the brush size to get those strokes where you can't really get the paint bucket to fit in properly now one of the other things that's really important about toning is that you don't just need to put like basic tones you can create tones from pictures or objects in clip studio and how do you do that because there are some times where you need a picture that might be in color or you have an object that might be also in color and you want that to be toned in black and white and there's a simple way to do this so the way that you do this is it can be found by going to this window and clicking on the layer property panel in there you'll see this icon with a bunch of little dots and this icon once you click it will turn any image image or anything that you've imported pictures and all into clip studio and make it into a tone so that means it'll turn into tiny little black and white dots and I tended to mess with the frequency of the dots to make it lighter or darker it'll make it a little more smoother because it'll add dots or it'll take away dots with the frequency the frequency creates more or less dots depending on how you swing the slider okay so I was nearing the end of my journey with creating my manga and I needed to add the words and the dialogue so I needed speech bubbles so now I'm gonna show you the tool that can be used for this but you don't really need it the word balloon tool in my opinion is way too stiff and I always thought that drawing your own bubbles will flow way better just a little side note you can actually use a sub tool inside of here to draw your own bubble but I think still all in all just having it drawn by yourself is way better so we can just toss that to the side for now but if you want to use it there it is there's also the lettering tool which is dope and you're gonna need it after you have your dialogue bubbles and created in your script, if you're not sure about how to make scripts, check out this video right here. Once you've put in your dialogue bubbles, you can create and click this letter A. And when you do that, you can start typing your dialogue from your script. A quick little note here is that there's no spell check inside of this app. So make sure you are careful when transferring what you wrote. That's why you're gonna need beta readers to read this over even after you've made your manga. It's always good to proofread everything that you put 
put, the app doesn't do that for you, even as magical as it is. Now you might be wondering if your default text is not what you want to use because for what I ended up using for my manga, I used wild words. And if you wanted to edit your text, there's this small little pencil at the bottom of your text that allows you to edit the color as well as the font size. And there's a whole mess of settings in this area that will help you mess around with your text. And like I said earlier, what I tend to use for my font is wild words, but it's really up to you what you want to use for your manga to change it up and vary it up as you want. Another little tidbit of a note that the text layer itself will have its own layer so you can also rasterize it later so you can mess with it, change some other things about it. But for the most part, I tend to leave it as text because sometimes you want to go back and edit it in case you made a mistake or said something you didn't mean to say. I think I've covered most of the core parts and tools that you're going to need to make your manga and explaining them hopefully in enough detail. However, there are a few more tools that I want to go over that I think are just as helpful but not necessarily needed but definitely will make making your manga a lot easier. And of course, I'm gonna end this up teaching you also how to export your manga and make everything great so everyone can read your creation. So let's get into those tools. So one of the tools that I didn't talk about is the object selection tool. There are other sub tools in there, but I use this tool a lot. Basically, it's like the selection tool. They're like cousins. However, during my process and probably your process, you will have that moment where you draw something on the wrong layer or have so many layers you aren't sure where anything is and if you don't name them properly and I'm guilty of doing this a few times but don't be like me and name your layers and try your best to organize your workflow it will help so much more in the end so basically this object selection tool will help you see what layer you are currently on by just using it to click around and find out it'll help immensely and it's better than the selection tool because it refers to to that specific layer when it clicks on it. However, even though the selection tool is great, it only talks about the layer that it's on, whereas the object selection tool is a little bit more direct and takes you to that layer so you can know what you need to know and the information you need to find out. It's a very helpful tool. Use it as much as you can. Another nice tool, the decoration brush, is a beautiful shorthand tool that helps if you want some help with backgrounds, with trees and such, or just decorating your manga with little flourishes in here and there. For me, in the last active note, I had a huge scene that needed a bunch of trees and I needed grass and the decoration tool was great for all of that. You can use it for what you need without needing to necessarily draw trees. It's the perfect shorthand for that. It's limited to the sections that you have here inside of the app and something you can do is you can tweak it inside of the settings to make it bigger, smaller. You can play around with it to figure it out. It's not just for trees. There's way more you can use for it. Just play around with it. I just wanted to bring it to your attention as sometimes just artwork that you're not artistically inclined to make or need to spend the energy on making. So shorthands are a great way to work that around. Also, I know this is at the end, 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 but in the beginning, when you first boot up the app, it takes you through like making your own account, which is actually really important to this app. I didn't talk about it in the tone section and I should have, but just bear with me. What you can do if there are things that you feel like are missing from your app or you want to add them, you can go to the Clip Studio site and download them. Half the time the tones are free or brushes are free. Sometimes you might have to pay a little bit of money, but most times they're free and you can just add that into your library of tools and it'll just help expand a lot of your shorthands and make your process even faster. Definitely take a look at the website. There's a lot of things loaded up here and people load things up consistently and constantly and it's really easy to get into the app. I just wanted to advocate for that because I did that also towards the end a little bit when I wanted to add a few things. So just think about using that more and checking it regularly once you have the app. It's a great resource for your library. Check it out. Now with most of the things that I feel like I've covered, the last part that I had to do and the most important part is the exporting process. So when I was happy with my manga and well, are we ever really happy with our works? But I had a deadline so I had to be. Now with that said, to get my work exported, I went to the top menu, I clicked on file, I clicked on export multiple pages. You will have more options to pick for, but the simplest one that you can click for the most part is PDF export. You'll name it whatever you want and it'll take its time and it'll make the file since I had so many pages about like 55. It'll take its time, but it'll export it wherever you really need it to go. Make sure you put it in a place that maybe is your project folder, 
just keep everything organized. I'll keep repeating that throughout this video. So another cool thing that you can do is look at your comic in Clip Studio. And how can you look at it? So what the program is going to do, it's going to make a 3D rendering of your manga in book form so you can see how it looks, which is really cool because I really found out about this going through this app again. I didn't know about this initially. And it's one of those things where you can always learn something new by going through the app. And it's so cool because you'll get to see what you'll get cut off what's missing the arrangement of your placement of your dialogue how you didn't follow those guidelines earlier that I showed you it'll tell you everything here so you can definitely check here to see if your book will come out right gosh this is so cool I definitely could have used this before I exported last time ah! <clears throat> okay so with that you can click batch export as well and click all the pages so if you're doing from page the cover till the end make sure you click it that way or if you have a set number of pages because you needed to edit them just check and make sure that you're putting in the right pages where you need to because it's gonna make every page or just those select number of pages in that format whether it's PNG JPEG whatever you want and then after that you'll just go through the necessary okay's and then you're done so this part is basically where I sent it out to the printing company I sent it out with all their specifications and for you it's gonna really just depend on how they want everything formatted so I can't really help you there but just follow their instructions and you should be good I wanted to cover a good amount of the tools I use in the process of making the manga because for the next step I want to go a little bit more in depth in the penciling and the inking but I tried to go as in depth that I could with a lot of the tools here so you guys can get accustomed if you wanted to try it out and definitely check out the other parts in the series to bring everything together to this point point. and I'm sure you guys might have noticed something that I might have missed or some tools that would work great that I didn't actually talk about or have knowledge on so if you do and you are a master at it put it in the comment section down below for everyone to know maybe some tools that I didn't talk about because I'd love to learn with everybody here because we're all learning together on this journey of making stories am I right but yeah guys that's all I have for you today I hope you enjoyed the video if this is your first time seeing me and you want to join a community of awesome creators you can do that by subscribing you can like the video to let me know that it was helpful and I hope that learning all about an in-depth process about how to use clip studio was interesting to you perhaps and ring that bell for notifications when you want to hear things that I have to say and if you're interested and you want to know about the traditional process of making manga, I can do that, but let's get this video to say 50 likes. I'm not even asking for that much. I can drop that next if that's what you guys are interested on. However, our next on our list in the process of making manga and comics is how should we pencil and ink our manga? Some tips there that I think will be very helpful and exciting for everyone once we get there. But till then, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye.